Good morning, everyone. This is Brad Matheny. Today is the 29th of October, uh, Tuesday, and we're getting ready for uh, nearing the end of the peak pattern. So we're looking at the SPY chart, and we are looking at a one-hour chart. Um, today, we're looking at the end of the peaking pattern setting up. We've got today and maybe tomorrow as what I see uh, being an opportunity for a bit of an upward move. You can see we're kind of flagging out down here. The last week or so have been very tough for traders, just like I told everyone. Markets are moving sideways. We've been getting some rotation, but, you know, we're really flagging out here. Let me draw this a little better. I know everybody loves my drawings. <laughs> you guys, uh, you know, for what it's worth, I'm doing my best, right, for drawing. So, oops, go away. So you can see we're kind of flagging into this area. And I'll make this kind of a bright color. And we're flagging into this area. So really coming down here probably. So we're looking at a potential flag apex volatility right in this current area. This is an apex right here where they meet or conjoin. Uh, and now we look at volatility here, potentially moving to the upside, potentially setting up our peak into Wednesday and then rolling through that topping pattern back into that downtrend. So, Again, this is where traders need to really start to prepare for, you know, looking to try to get to cash, looking to try to protect activity, uh, and really trying to prepare for what's coming next. Now, my opinion, as I've stated for many weeks, is that we are going to look at a moderate rollover top into Thursday, the 31st, and seeing downward activity likely on Friday, and then we're going to have downward activity on Monday, and then likely see, setting up a, and I'll do this as a darker color, likely setting up a very mild inside day on the election day. So we're going to be looking at a pretty solid kind of a rolling uh, price trend on the SPY, probably leading to a moderate rally phase, maybe up into 587, 588, 589 area, 590 maybe over the next day or two on maybe a, a burst of energy. And then we're going to be rolling into a top and heading down, I think, probably into the 570 area, which is where I think we're going to base probably somewhere in this 575 to 570 area and then kind of roll out of this into volatility. The post-election uh, move is really going to probably be a relief move followed by immediate contraction, followed by an attempt to move higher, followed by some contraction, followed by another attempt to move higher. I think we're going to be fairly relieved uh, two or three days after the election. So that's kind of my opinion is whatever the outcome is, I think we're going to, you know, it's going to, I think a lot of people are pretty much ready for this election to be over with. So we'll see how it plays out. Okay, so now QQQ, kind of looking at the same thing. We had kind of a, let me get rid of this, an upward move yesterday, get rid of that, 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 and get rid of that. Okay, so this is a one hour chart. Um, you know, we're looking at that flagging formation. Um, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, to an ultimate low. We're rolling kind of into this sideways flagging. Um, we did have a new high move yesterday and then consolidate down into this. Uh, we're move, uh, opening right into this area here. Um, but again, the NASDAQ, because it is a different beast than the SPY, has likely already moved into toppy. You can see this move here. So let me shrink this down a little bit. So at this point, we should be already hedging the NASDAQ. I think that this area here is going to be fairly toppy. I think we should be hedging already this move. Uh, I think it's going to be uh, already setting up as kind of a rolling peak, like I suggested right up here. 
kind of a rolling peak pattern right here. Make sure I get them lined up right. And what I'm looking at today is moderate consolidation. So what I would suggest again is that, you know, we probably have on the NASDAQ a fairly quiet range, possibly setting up some kind of a moderate congestion today, back possibly down into this area, leading to a further decline into the election. Oops. Leading to a further decline into the election and possibly moving down into this 480 to 485 area, maybe a little bit lower, maybe down here in this 477 area. So again, we're, we're following right along kind of with my patterns. As I mentioned to you, you know, this last week, basically from, from here on, so when you look at this area here, got a little difficult for my patterns. Uh, and it's simply because we ran into lack of liquidity, which I've been telling you is going to disrupt the markets and disrupt the market trends. You know, generally, I can say that, you know, as far as my predictive abilities with these patterns, you know, I'd say they've been pretty good. I did predict that, you know, we're going to run into some consolidation. I did predict that we would get sideways trading here, moving into a bit of an uptrend, um, carrying with co a, a correction bar here on the 23rd, which again, turned into a downward correction bar, um, moved into bullish trending, bullish trending, bullish trending, um, giving us this opportunity here. And now we're looking at that topping pattern, right? Where I said the top was gonna set up. So, I mean, as far as predicting goes, you tell me. I mean, I hate to try to count my own horn here, but you know, I don't know too many people that could predict this two, three weeks in advance like I did. Granted, I was off on the price. I was off on the range of price. But as far as what price actually did, it's pretty close to what I predicted. Um, you know, when you look at the general shape, when you look at the general rotation of trend, um, you know, having these pullback bars called at almost exactly the time that they happen, having these rotations in trend up into swing trades happen almost exactly like I predicted. Um, and now we're going to see this, this rally phase off of this low come up to this top and attempt to roll down, just like I predicted many weeks in advance. Um, so again, not trying to tout my own horn, but, you know, it's, it's actually quite impressive. It really is. And again, I'm working on a QQQ version of the cycle patterns. Uh, not quite ready yet. I haven't fully tested it, but it's looking pretty good so far. I just, like I said, before I release it to everybody, I need to need to prepare. So at this point, if you're following along, you should have already moved to cash and started to sell hedge right now. In other words, you should be looking at put positions over the last 24 to 48 hours, uh, you know, getting position for this pullback mode into the election. And I really think the liquidity is going to dry up. I mean, yes, we have good earnings. Yes, we have a lot of big technology companies going to play out. But I think, like I said, you know, the next four, five, six days, you might as well just hedge with some put options, pull everything out to cash that you want, and uh, just kind of sit on the sidelines, figure out when you want to execute your options. Because I think hedging with put options up in this area would be a very smart move down to here. And then hedging with long or call options here would be a very smart move, possibly 10 to 15 days out after the election. I think that would be a very smart move for skilled traders. Just let your capital sit, use options efficiently to try to catch some of these moves. Remember the post-election move, and I've drawn a lot of these lines here, but you know it's gonna be volatile. So post-election, I think what we're gonna have here, guys, is you know, a bit of a relief rally. So I'll draw it up as a relief rally. And then we're going to see some consolidation. Like what's actually happening? I think that 
you know, whoever wins, there's probably going to be <clears throat> legal battles. There's probably going to be a lot of news. Uh, we're going to go through the end of the year, uh, the earnings cycle for Q3. Uh, and then we're also going to move into that Santa rally phase. So I think that, you know, by the time we get into uh, Thanksgiving, which is really in middle of November, about a week and a half after the election, I think we're going to be pausing a bit. And then I think we're going to move into a moderate melt up into December. And it's going to kind of surprise people. I think the moderate melt up into December is going to be pretty much, you know, the resolution that the election is over and we're moving forward no matter what into 2025. And uh, that's going to be a fairly solid, moderate, melt-up type of trend. So we'll see how it plays out. Okay, so let's go to gold. Gold is moving slightly upward. It looks like gold is up 5 bucks right now. Spread this out. We have that move left in gold to see if we can get above this high. And if we can get above this high, we have a chance to move up here to the 18 or 2800 area. We're not going to get to that 2840. I'm sorry to say, um, you know, gold has consolidated that same last week has been very difficult for gold rolling sideways. Uh, we do have today, which is a moderate update. And we do have tomorrow, which is a moderate update showing us that we have a potential for about maybe this kind of a move. 2790, maybe 2800 right up in this area. And uh, that, I think, is going to be about it. Now, we could get a big breakaway move up into this area. You know, if gold really broke on some news, maybe 2810, 2815. Uh, on a big rally up. But then, like I said, I think we're going to move into real consolidation into gold, flagging out, as I've shown here. And remember, this is where we see this big roll, this big roll in price coming. So I think we're going to need to be cautious that gold is whatever move we've got left to the upside. It's probably only going to last for 24 to 48 hours from now, no longer than probably Thursday, the 31st. Okay, and now silver. Same type of setup. I don't think we're going to see anything. Whoops. Anything massive here. I think we're going to be looking at a move kind of like I drew here yesterday. You know, maybe back up into this area here, which is 35, 35, 35, 25. Peaking, rolling and breaking downward. Okay. Nothing really crazy. And then lastly, we'll go to Bitcoin. Bitcoin broke out of the consolidation channel a bit early. This is good to see. Um, it shows that we have this move. We're now moving to an ultimate high. Uh, as I mentioned to you earlier, getting up into that ultimate high level can be, uh, can be very powerful. We might be looking to move up here to 72,850. Uh, so we're looking at possibly a move up into this area, possibly even a little bit higher, maybe 74,000. Uh, and then this should be the ultimate peak, folks. That should be really the, the, the peak in the move. Now, uh, again, this breakout happening just before the election, uh, I want to point out, is indicating that very likely the Bitcoin is going to be potentially leading. I've, I've seen a lot of articles about Bitcoin correlating to the NASDAQ and or correlating to hedge assets. And I would say that, you know, at this point with this move in Bitcoin, I'd kind of be watching the SPY and the QQQ and gold and silver to see if they correlate into this upward move or if they don't. I mean, a Bitcoin, a move like this with Bitcoin typically would, to me, indicate a, uh, a, a a hedging instrument. It's acting as a hedge against fear. So again, I'm going to watch this to see what happens. But ultimately, we're playing out just perfectly. 
breaking away from this consolidation phase. Yeah, a little early, a little bit earlier than I expected, but really we need to watch for this area, this ultimate peak setting up in the next two or three days, um, peaking potentially and then rolling downward, potentially rolling downward into the election. So again, we'll have to see how this plays out, whether or not we get this top around 7260, 72,700 to 72,000 for 74,400. Okay, guys, that's it for now. We'll talk to you later.